Hi, today I'm going to talk about how to design and laser cut game dials that are held together with magnets. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And a couple of months ago, one of my viewers, Stephen, reached out to me and asked me if I would create prototypes of game dials for his game Fables End that he was going to be launching on Kickstarter early this year. And uh, now I get a lot of requests from people to make things and I always say no because I'm, I'm not in the manufacturing business and um, I'm in the education and inspiration business so I don't have time to do manufacturing. But that, this isn't manufacturing, this is prototyping and I was interested in prototyping. And the other thing was that he's an artist. He had done all the artwork for the game. He had already done the artwork for the dials. It was really good, and I was impressed by that. And then the other thing was he wanted them held together by magnets, and I had never done that before. In fact, I didn't even know when he asked if it was feasible. So I was intrigued by that. I've done uh, plenty of dials in the past. I've laser cut them out of different materials. I've 3D printed them. Uh, but they've always been held together by cold connections or some kind of a brad or something. I had not used magnets, so I was very interested in that. So using Stephen's artwork, I did Adobe Illustrator drawings. I figured out how to um, get the magnets inserted. I started out with bigger prototypes, uh, but there's a spot they needed to fit into in the box, and that's what these eventually got downsized too, and I think they, they turned out great. So I'm going to talk about how I did the illustrator drawings for these and how I cut them on the laser cutter. And I'm going to show you that in this episode. The original artwork that Stephen sent me were images, PNGs done in Photoshop. And to drive a laser cutter, I need vector graphics. So I recreated them in Illustrator. I made the red pentagon cut line using the polygon shape, five sides with curved corners, and then to convert that for the top, I drew an oval on the layer above. I selected both pieces and said Pathfinder minus front, and it cuts away that arc. For the engraving, I used the original image, but I had a problem when I sent this to Lightburn. In addition to the red and black, it saw five other colors, so there were a lot of hidden things in the image. When I went back into Illustrator and took a closer look, what had been a simple black and white picture to me really had many shades of gray. I took it back into Photoshop and did some techniques to turn it all pure black and white. I brought that back into Illustrator, did an image trace, and now when I put it to light burn, it works the way I expect. Now I could focus on the magnet. The magnet has to be in the exact center, and there are a couple of ways to find the center of a pentagon, like drawing lines that bisect two of the angles and where they intersect is the center. And while that's easy to do with a pencil and a compass, it turns out it's not very easy to do in Illustrator. I found a couple of methods online, but I figured I better check my work to make sure it was really the center. So I did a drawing with the two layers over each other and the magnet where I thought the magnet should be. And then I selected the bottom and I rotated it. Now when I click the rotate button, it shows me where it thinks the center is and it's above what I, the place I think it's the center. So I do an alt click on the, my center and I start rotating 72 degrees because that's one fifth of 360 and I can virtually test my dial before I actually cut it. When I press Control D, it will redo the transformation I just did. So I could just sit there and rotate through the dial to make sure everything lined up properly. This saves me time and materials. While I was waiting for the magnets I ordered that I thought would be the right size, I used magnets I already had to test the concept. To fit these bigger and thicker magnets, I went to a larger dial with four layers where I could cut away the magnet hole. I'm using 1 8 inch Baltic birch and I'm going to glue these together with just wood glue and I weight them down with these granite blocks while they dry. 
I use E6000 as the adhesive for the magnets and I have to be very careful to get the polarity correct so the two parts stick together instead of repel. And I was really happy to find out it worked great. They stuck together. There was enough friction though that when you turned it, it would stay on the number you put it on, which is important for a dial. But the real dials with the new magnets are only one layer of wood each. And the magnet for the top layer has to go on the back. So I set up my light burn project to have two steps. I firmly clamped the wood to the bed using these magnetic clamps. The first step is to do the regular engraving and cutting. Then using a little ball of masking tape, I carefully flip the top layer over. I'm using my board as a jig. Now I can run my second step, which is to engrave a deep pocket for the two magnet locations. My new magnets are about a sixteenth of an inch thick, so I need to engrave about halfway into these boards. And in fact, when I put the stack of magnets in place, it's just one magnet deep. This is my final cut sheet. I can get eight full dials out of one 12 by 12 board. You can see in the layer panel that I have the engraving and the cutting and then outputting separately is the green, which is the magnet holes. Stephen wanted the dials to be stained, so I pre-stained the boards and then did a clear top coat. This way I don't have to mask, I can just wipe the pieces clean with a damp sponge afterwards. Engraving runs first, then the cutting, then it stops and waits for me to flip. And once again I'm using that little ball of masking tape to help me do it carefully. And then once I've just flipped the tops, I run the final step, which is the deep engrave of the magnet holes. Even though the stain is the lightest I have, there's not enough contrast with the engraving. So I ran a second set where I didn't do any stain, but I did do a clear coat so that I could clean the pieces up afterwards. I thought these were a lot more readable. Working with magnets can be tricky, so let me tell you about my magnet process. I would do one dial at a time and I would start with the two halves open with the magnet holes up. Then I would pull a pair of magnets off of the stack. Then I would pry that pair apart and carefully lay them so that the insides where they had connected were both up. And then I would put the glue in the holes and I would slide the magnets over and drop them into the pocket. Now for the important part, I would pick up the top and I would hold it over the bottom and if I had done it right, the two parts would actually repel each other. This way you know definitively that you've done it correctly without sucking the magnet out of the hole by testing the attraction. And then for E6000, you have to let those cure for 24 hours. I felt like I needed to do something to make the stain dials more readable. If you look at the bottom dial here, the engraving is exactly the same color as the stain. So I used a shade from my Citadel paints, and shades are kind of like acrylic inks, and I used this Seraphim Sepia and a very small brush to drop it into all of the engraving on the bottom layer to read the numbers, and in the word damage on the top layer. I think this made them a lot more readable, as you can see here on the full set. Here are the final dials, both natural and stained. I think they look great with Stephen's beautiful cards, and they fit perfectly in the box. I've decided magnets are my new favorite way to hold game dials together. I'm already designing new dials for Frosthaven, which just arrived. If you'd like to see those and then the other great projects I have in mind, please subscribe to my channel.